The toxin of the focus is dianabol, also known as methandrostinolone. Dianabol occurs synthetically as it is an anabolic steroid. Anabolic steroids are synthetic derivatives of the naturally occurring testosterone. Anabolic steroids are derived via the methylation of the alpha carbon 17 of testosterone. Anabolic steroids are known for their use in sport and bodybuilding, and their use is surrounded by controversy. They are now banned for recreation purposes, but are still used illegally. Dianabol does have therapeutic uses, which includes the replacement of male sex steroids in men who have androgen deficiency and the treatment of rare, for rare forms of aplastic anemia. Dianabol is orally effective and is taken in the pill and tablet form. Dianabol has a cyclic ring structure. The two functional groups present in the molecule are an alcohol group and a ketone group. The alcohol group is number 3 on the polarity ranking, while the ketone group is number 4.5 on the polarity ranking list. Since both functional groups are relatively polar, they will provide some resistance to simple transcellular diffusion. Although there was no experimental log POW value available, software predicted the log POW value to be 3.51. 3.51 is a positive number, meaning that the molecule is slightly more hydrophobic than it is hydrophilic. 3.51 is included in the range of log POW values that are considered drug-like. Therefore, Dianabol is a good candidate for simple diffusion. There are no experimental or predicted pKa values for the alcohol group on Dianabol. However, the predicted pKa value for the alcohol group on testosterone is 19.09. Assuming that dianabol would have a similar pKa value, we can compare the value of 19.09 to the various pH levels seen in the stomach and GI tract. After comparison, it is apparent that the pH will never be larger than the pKa. Therefore, dianabol will remain protonated and will not be ionized. Transporters will not have to facilitate diffusion. After absorption by simple diffusion, dianabol will be distributed to the liver where it will be metabolized. To get to the liver, it will cross multiple cell membranes via simple diffusion. Simple diffusion is utilized as it is a non-ionized molecule. Anabolic steroids, including dianabol, are highly protein-bound. They are carried by a specific protein. The specific protein is sex hormone binding globulin. Sex hormone binding globulin inhibits the function of the steroid molecule. However, the methylation of the alpha-17 carbon of testosterone decreases the mo molecule's affinity for sex hormone binding globulin. Therefore, in the case of dianabol, there is a decreased affinity for sex hormone binding globulin. The decreased affinity means that the function of dianabol is not inhibited. Once dianabol has reached the liver, it can be metabolized. Dianabol has many different metabolites. Phase 1 reactions that produce these metabolites include hydroxylation, oxidation, reduction, and epimerization. These reactions are enzyme-catalyzed. The primary superfamily of phase 1 enzymes are cytochrome P450s. Phase 1 reactions increase polarity and make dianabol more accessible to phase 2 metabolizing enzymes. Metabolism of dianabol can have multiple steps. In this diagram, you can see there is a hydrogenation of the double bond between carbon-4 and carbon-5 by 5-beta reductase. There is also a hydrogenation of the double bond between carbon-1 and carbon-2. The ketone group of carbon-3 can also be reduced by 3-alpha dehydrogenases. However, the main metabolic route for dianabol is the 6-beta hydroxylation pathway. This metabolite has an additional hydroxyl group on carbon-6. In this diagram, it is outlined in green. Dianabol can also be metabolized by the enzyme aromatase to form the metabolite methyl estradiol. Aromatase is an enzyme that is necessary for essential steps in the biosynthesis of estrogen. Aromatase is also a member of the cytochrome P450 family. Following phase 2 metabolism reactions, Phase 2 metabolism occur can occur. The phase 2 metabolism reactions that dianabol undergoes are sulfonation and glucuronidation. Glucuronidation is enzymatically catalyzed by UGTs. The reaction also requires the cofactor UDPGA55. Sulfonation is catalyzed by sulfo sulfotransferases. They require 3 phosphoadenosine 5-phosphate also known as PAPSs, as a cofactor in the sulfonate transfer. The metabolite epimethyldion 
is readily formed by the attack of water on the sulfate conjugate of dianabol. Phase two metabolism reactions increase hydrophilicity to facilitate excretion of dianabol from the body. Dianabol metabolites occurs through the urinary tract and the metabolites leave the body through the urine. Analyzing human urine through gas chromatography is actually the method used to check to see if athletes are using steroids. The urine is checked to see if dianabol metabolites are present. Although phase two metabolism does occur for some of the dianabol metabolites, excretion is not entirely dependent on it. For example, one of the main metabolites of dianabol, the 6-hydroxy metabolite, was identified in 1963 and was found to be excreted unconjugated. Also, excretion does not occur immediately. The 17-beta-hydroxymethyl metabolite has shown to be traceable in urine 19 days after administration. Here you can see some very concerned citizens are wondering if Dianabol, aka D-Ball, will show up on their pre-employment drug test. Unfortunately for them, Dianabol metabolites do show up in urine. The target of Dianabol that we are focusing on are the hepatic sinusoids. Hepatic sinusoids are a type of sinusoidal blood vessel. They contain the oxygen-rich blood from the hepatic artery as well as the nutrient-rich blood from the portal veins. Sinusoids are different from capillaries because there is a presence of open pores. Hepatic sinusoids are lined with endothelial cells and they are bordered by plates of hepatocytes. Hepatic sinusoids, along with hepatocytes, can transport small mo molecules to and from the bloodstream. Also associated with hepatic sinusoids are Kupfer cells. These cells are macrophages that can pick up and destroy foreign molecules, such as bacteria. Ultimately, hepatic sinusoids play an essential role in blood movement. The hepatic sinusoid endothelial cells are especially important. They have a number of functions which include provide a porous barrier that facilitates the oxygenation of hepatocytes and increases hepatocyte exposure to macromole macromolecules in the port of circulation, clear colloids, and macromolecules from circulation and provide microcirculation. Various liver damage and diseases correspond to the methylation of the alpha carbon 17 in steroids. The main metabolite of dianabol, the 6 beta hydroxyl metabolite, is still methylated at the carbon 17 position. Therefore, the only difference in structure between the parent toxin and the metabolite is that the 6 beta hydroxyl metabolite has an additional hydroxyl group at the carbon-6 position. Association of hepatotoxicity and 17-alpha methylation of steroids are thought to be due to their conjugation. D-ring glucuronidides of methyl estradiol have been found to cause dose-dependent reversible cholestasis. Cholestasis is a condition where bile is unable to flow from the liver to the duodenum. 17-beta glucuronidides were found to be be specifically and strongly binded to receptor sites in the canalicular membrane of the liver. This stereospecific and strong binding is thought to be due to the similarity of 17 beta conjugates of dianabol to bile acids. Bile acids are acidic 17 beta substituted steroids. Dianabol induced cholestasis therefore may be related to competition between steroid 17 beta glucuronidides and bile acids for recognition at receptor sites. It may also be related to the decrease of permeability of hepatocytes. Dianabol use is correlated to an increase in plasma activity of liver enzymes such as aspartate aminotransferase, AST, aniline aminotransferase, ALT, alkaline phosphatase, AP, lactate dehydrogenase, LDH, and gamma glutamyl transpeptidase, GGT. These enzymes are present in hepatocytes in relatively high concentrations. An increase in plasma level levels of these enzymes can reflect heptocellular damage or at least increase permeability of the heptocellular membrane. These increased levels of liver enzymes is, are a reversible reaction as if the use of dianabol is, continued, is discontinued, the levels of these enzymes tend to go back to normal. However, extended use of dianabol, which leads to increased permeability of the hepatocytes, which can lead to damage, with repeated damage to the hepatocytes and breakdown of the sinusoidal borders, a condition called hepatic Peliosis can occur. Hepatic peliosis is characterized by the presence of multiple blood-filled cavities. These cystic structures can potentially rupture and cause extreme bleeding. 
Benign and malignant liver tumors have been also been reported following the chronic use of dianabol and other anabolic steroids. Again, these tumors are associated with the presence of a methyl group on the alpha carbon 17 position. Fortunately, many of these tumors reported have been benign and their growth is antigen dependent. Therefore, their size has decreased following the discontinuation of dianabol use. This further shows that the toxicity of dianabol is dependent on chronic use and that many of the toxic, toxic effects are reversible. Dianabol and other anabolic steroids have been popular among athletes as anabolic steroids promote the building of muscle. Anabolic stero steroids have many other side effects besides potential liver damage. Other effects that can be seen at the organismal level are inhibition of natural hormones, negative effects on cholesterol levels, development of breast tissues in males, acne, increased aggressiveness, baldness, viralization, sterility, and high blood pressure. Many of these negative side effects are seen with long-term use. For instance, if a male only took dianabol once, he would not grow breast tissue. These effects at organismal level can be harmful though, but these negative effects are seen with constant use over a significant period of time. Dianabol can also be used as a therapeutic for a variety of conditions. For example, wound and burn healing has been treated with anabolic steroids. These steroids increase collagen synthesis and the activity of dermal fibroblasts and this has had a positive effect on healing rates in wounds that, are, have, that were previously non-healing. In most of the diseases that dianabol is used to treat, its anabolic nature is focused on. It is used to treat diseases where weight gain and strengthening is necessary.